Today in Pakistan, protesters condemned a NATO airstrike over the weekend that killed at least 24 Pakistani soldiers and wounded others. The U.S.-led NATO force in Afghanistan said they are investigating the attack that took place late Friday or early Saturday morning and called it tragic and unintended. The details are still emerging. Pakistan's prime minister condemned what his government called an unprovoked attack. Pakistan has shut down key supply lines for NATO forces leading into Afghanistan and said it is reviewing its alliance with the U.S. For more, we're joined by writer Fred Branfman. His articles have warned of the dangers of U.S. policy in Pakistan and in the region. Welcome to FSRN. Thank you. Today in Pakistan, students, lawyers, fuel truck drivers, and and many others were in the streets protesting the U.S. military and NATO following this weekend's attack. They want Pakistani leaders to quit the so-called war on terror and end U.S. use of military bases. But we've seen protests like this in the past. Do you see these as any different? Yeah, well, I, I just think things are intensifying. Uh, it's 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 unclear whether this will lead, for example, to them closing permanently the uh, the uh, supply lines into Afghanistan that we need to supply our troops there. But it, things are definitely getting worse, and the risk of a military coup is growing, an anti-U.S. military coup. And in my opinion, and I think most people have looked at it, the risks of uh, nuclear materials falling into terrorist hands are growing. Because our policy, U.S. policy, is made of so hated in Pakistan. You mentioned the um, closing of supply routes to NATO uh, for NATO forces into Afghanistan from Pakistan. Is that something that could last indefinitely, and, and how will that affect NATO efforts? Well, it would be uh, uh, it would be a, a big blow to NATO efforts. Theoretically, they do have these uh, alternative supply routes through Kyrgyzstan. They could, up, I suppose, increase the an airlift, but it would be extremely expensive uh, to do that. Uh, it would be a, definitely be a blow. Since this attack, we've seen the protests in not just in Karachi today, but in in other cities as well. You've written about the unintended consequences in Pakistan of U.S. policy in the country, but also in the region. How does this latest uh, event fit into that? Well, what we're doing is we're infuriating the Pakistani military. Uh, there have already been front-page stories in the New York Times warning of a possible anti-U.S. coup by younger officers in Pakistan. That's the first danger. There could be a military coup by people opposed to the United States, uh, uh, able to get their economic and military aid from China instead of us, and uh, causing the greatest foreign policy crisis of our lifetimes for Pakistan, our armed nation, to become an enemy of the United States. Our, our leaders are unfortunately and foolishly making this more likely. The second danger, which uh, U.S. Ambassador to Ann Patterson revealed secretly, of course she never said this to the American people, but it was revealed in WikiLeaks that the United States is extremely worried that nuclear materials could filter out of Pakistan's nuclear stockpile, which, by the way, is the world's fastest growing and most unstable nuclear stockpile, and fall into the hands of uh, terrorists, or for that matter, other nations, like Iran. Um, so those are the two most immediate dangers. And our leaders, I mean, by fighting in Afghanistan, For in the end, I mean, we've been there ten years. This, the, the present government it will never stand on its own. They're increasing the dangers of Pakistan uh, 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 threatening us, and, and this is the most insane thing that I've seen in my lifetime. Hamid Karzai has expressed concern that Pakistan will pull out of an upcoming conference in Bonn. That's uh, due to due to this uh, latest attack. Pakistan itself has has warned that it may do that. Um, how could this affect efforts in Afghanistan and NATO's efforts there? Well, we, we've mentioned one way they could cut off the routes, but I think um, you know we're just fooling ourselves. I think nothing would help U.S. national security more than to pull out of Afghanistan, um, 
uh, stop the drone strikes in Pakistan and focus on, get, on, uh, on spreading electricity to the uh, people of Pakistan, which would make us popular again, and then the government would be willing to cooperate with us on safeguarding their nuclear materials. Well, this incident also brings up the that region, the border region there, and, and you bring up the idea of spreading electricity. So uh, you're making the argument of uh, putting those efforts towards uh, development in the region rather than these um, uh, war efforts in Afghanistan and, and nearby. Yeah, I mean, think about it. If right now 125 million people want it, want it regard us as their enemy, that's 70% of the people of Pakistan. That includes the people who are presently guarding the nuclear facilities. We have to spread electricity, which, by the way, is the prime minister said is the number one priority of his government in Pakistan, uh, so as to diminish the hatred towards us, get some cooperation going so that they, we can find terrorists who want to kill us by working with the Pakistanis instead of alienating them. Fred Branfman has written extensively on U.S. policy in Pakistan. He's also an expert on the CIA's secret war in Laos. Thank you so much for your time. Well, thank you, sir.